Hi, this is Ashley with The Polished Engineer, and thanks for checking out my tips and tricks. Today I'm going to be running through an Excel Basics class with you guys. Um, so if you have any comments afterwards or questions, please feel free to add them to the comments below. Uh, one additional thing, please tap that subscribe button if you'd like to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be doing weekly tips and tricks from now on, so hopefully you can come and pop by and visit so that you can get some information on how to better work with the spreadsheets available in my shop. Today, I'm gonna start with understanding how to download a file from the internet. So um, here I have an email message where I've actually had the tracker sent to myself. If you're ordering from Etsy, there may be a link that you can download from. But in either case, what you're gonna do is you're going to download the file. So in this case, I just double click on the file name and it's going to open itself up into Excel. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that once it opens, if I try to type in here, which I'm trying to do right now, nothing happens. Um, so if that happens to you, if you open up your file for the first time after downloading it and you cannot type onto it, it's because your file was opened in protected view. And this is kind of a safety feature for Excel that's making sure that you know where the file is coming from, just in case you open something that could potentially contain a virus. Since you know that this file is safe, you kind of see this banner up here telling you, be careful, files from the internet can contain viruses. Um, because you know it's safe, you can go ahead and click this enable ed editing button. And once you do that, it will open up in a read only. So you'll see here it says read only. And then you'll be able to type into it. After you type in though, you may notice that if you try to click save, you'll most likely get this error message and it's saying that you can't save the file because it's read only. Um, so one of the things that you'll notice is that as soon as you download something from the internet, it's always gonna open up in this read only view. And so that's mainly because when it downloaded, it downloaded it to kind of a temporary folder on your computer and so in order to put it in a location that you'll be able to find it later, you'll need to say OK. And then it should open up this save as file kind of area. If it doesn't, you just need to go to file and then save as. Um, and for my version of Excel, I'll click, click browse. You can do the same. And then just find a location that you can save it. I'm going to save this one on my desktop and I'm actually going to take out some of this extraneous information. I'll just say it's Color Street Business Tracker Demo. And then I'll click Save. And so now, if I try to click this Save button, it should go ahead and save it. It won't give me that read error message. So um, let's recap real quick. If you're opening an internet file um, or an Excel file that you downloaded from the internet for the first time, most likely you won't be able to type in and so if that happens, look for the banner at the top and click Enable Editing. After you do type, if you try to save it, it's most likely going to give you an error message saying that it's a read-only file. And if that happens, then you just need to go to File, Save As, and then save the file in a location that you can find it. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to discuss is tabs. Um, if you've listened to any of my other videos and if you've read my instructions, you'll most likely understand that or know that I talk a lot about tabs. And some people may be curious just what is a tab. So here I have kind of this demo one that says header. Um, on your tabs, you'll see the introduction, you'll see P&L summary, quantities. These are all places where you basically have information. It's almost like little individual workbooks inside of your big Excel workbook. So they're called worksheets, um, but I like to call them tabs, and I think that's what a lot of people call them as well. So if you click on a tab, let's say, um, the P&L summary, you'll notice that there's a lot of information in here, and it's been structured and set up in a certain way. Um, but you may say, why are they colored this way? And that's kind of my own personal way of organizing the different tabs, and you're welcome to change that if you don't like the way they're organized. Um, but what I tried to do was color code them so that things that kind of operate together or similarly are linked kind of by each other. So for the PL summary and the quantities tab, these are the two tabs that you should never 
edit data on. Um, and that's why I put red for those tab colors. So it's, in my mind, kind of a reminder, this is a stop sign, don't edit those tabs. Um, because if you do, it could mess up other things. Alternatively, the product list and the customer info tabs, I left as pink and I kind of linked those as the same color because in those tabs, you can mess with them however you want. So if you wanted to add some more notes columns here, you can add more notes columns. You can change any of the information in the tables. There are no formulas here, so it won't mess anything up. Same thing with the product list. If you have this product type and you don't like the product types that are preloaded, you can go and change any of those that you want. If you need to add another one uh, column, let's say that you want to mark things that are retired, you can add a retired column and go ahead and put in things that are retired there. So you're not really going to mess things up by deleting data in here or by um, adding in new columns. So that's kind of the key thing about these two pink tabs. You can edit them and it's not really going to mess anything up. On the color street orders and inventory adjustments, have those colored the same because that's places where you're going to get inventory into your sheet. Customer sales and extra income are colored green because it's money and that's where you're putting basically your income and your profits into the spreadsheet. Expenses is by itself as a solo color just because it's the only one that's actually creating losses in your spreadsheet. And then the invoice I also have kind of as its own color since it's kind of a standalone um, part of the product that you're able to send to customers. If you don't like the way the colors of the tabs are laid out, you can always right click on the tab name and then click tab color and then you can go in and change it. So we can change invoice to uh, say navy. Let's say you don't like the name of the tab. You have two options here. You can either double click it and change the name or you could right click and say rename. Both of those will allow you to change the name. So let's say you don't like extra income and you want to change it to color street income to remind yourself that that's where you're getting the income from. You're actually getting it from color street and it's being directly sent to you by them. So for tab names, you can rename them and you can also recolor them. You can also move them around. If you don't like the order, you can click on the tab, hold it down, and then you can actually drag it and drop it somewhere. And that would also be an option. So if you wanna reorder the tabs, you can do that. Again, any of those things, renaming, moving, or recoloring will not mess anything up in the spreadsheet or in the tracker, so you can go ahead and do that. One of the other things that you may notice is that um, if you have a newer version, um, I started putting what I like to call um, protections onto the sheet. So, like I mentioned earlier, you're not supposed to mess with the P&L summary. So, if I try to type in there now, I'm going to get this error message and it's going to say, the seller chart you're trying to change is on a protected sheet. To make a change unprotected, you might need to request the password. So, I have not put any passwords in here. You can unprotect it at any point in time. Um, but I did put those protections so that if you accidentally try to change a formula on the quantities or the P&L summary, or you try to do something on one of these tabs that's going to compromise the functionality of the sheet, that it will go ahead and alert you and say, hey, this is something you shouldn't be doing. Um, if you ever decide that you don't want those protections there and you want to be able to mess around with the sheet, um, again, if you do that, I can't really promise that the functionality will remain, but you can always right click on the tab and then click on unprotect sheet. And if you do that, then you will be able to type in there and it will not give you an error message. So just keep in mind though that now you've overwritten a formula and you won't be able to get it back. I'll go ahead and undo. So if that happens, you could quickly undo it, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to correct errors. If you wanna put the protection back on, you can right click and say protect sheet and then just say okay and it will add the protection back onto the sheet. So I have protections now on the P&L summary, the quantities tab, and then also um, on the invoice tab. Um, so the, the protection will show up um, if you try to type in any of these kind of columns over here. Um, but you should be able to edit anything else on the sheet without it giving you an error. Okay. Um, those are the main things I wanted to cover. So those are kind of the basics of how to download a file, what to do once you open it. You can save it and do a save as. 
also kind of giving you an overview of what the tabs are and how you could go ahead and rename and color code and move tabs around. The one final thing that I kind of wanted to talk about because it's really important as you work through your sheet is sorting and filtering. Um, those are two things that are really helpful as you work with your products and it's something that we do a lot of in the sheet and I talk about a lot so I thought it would be worthwhile to go through that right now. So one of the things that you're going to want to do are um, being able to sort. So there are going to be times when you say, okay, for in this example, I have a blank row in my product list. I want to rename or reorder my products so that they come or they show up in the right order. One of the things you can do is come in here and you can click on data and you can click filter and that will take those little arrow boxes off of there. And then if you click filter again, it'll repopulate those arrow boxes. So that kind of resets your filter so that you can come in here and make sure that all of the products are selected and included in that filter. Then you can click the down arrow and click sort and it should resort them. In this case, it didn't do that. So you might say, okay, well now what do I do? So the other option that you have is to come in here and actually highlight the whole table. So I'll just highlight all the way down to the bottom blank and then click sort and just make sure that it says sort by product name. Um, if it doesn't, it may say column A and that's because it's grabbing your header um, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to put product name in the middle of your products. So make sure you click the product name or the my data has headers and then it'll show you, okay, product name is the one that I want to sort on and then say, okay, and then that will sort them. Again, if you need to refresh the filter just to make sure it's grabbing all the data, you can click filter, unfilter. Um, you can also click this little arrow here and click sort. So those are some options. If you need to filter, so let's say that you're not sure if uh, you've put one of the new release products in there. Let's say that um, something new just got released. Let's say it's the, I don't know, blue in Peru. So we can type in blue here and it'll show me all of the items that have the word blue in here. And you can say, oh look, blue in Peru, it's already been added. So I don't need to add that one into my product anymore, into my product list. Um, let's say that I wanna see if um, space case was in there. You can again type in space. Oh look, space case was already added. So I don't need to put that one in. So that's a quick way for you to view and see whether or not your products have actually been added into the list. So I used filtering quite a bit um, just when I'm cross-checking and making sure that I didn't miss a product um, and that I have everything in there. Um, there's a lot of tabs that don't have the filter buttons on them already, so if you ever feel like you want to view something, um, you want to filter it, you can always, what I like to tell people to do is click on column A1, just kind of in this top left corner, and then click the data filter button and then that will give you the option to filter. So let's say um, you wanna know how many Jewel of Mumbai's you have in your whole product, um, in your whole Color Street Orders tab, you can actually come in here and say, okay, I wanna see just that one. Oh, look, that's the only one that I actually have in here. And you can say select all again. Um, or you could say, I wanna see how many Beijing Beauties I have. Oh, okay, this is my only order with it. So it's a quick way, um, for you to be able to view which products you've actually ordered and then what dates you may have ordered them. Um, the other place where this is also helpful is under your customer sales. So if you had a bunch of customer sales in here um, and you have the customer names, um, so let's say I have Amanda G and she's got all these different products. Um, I don't know. I'll just grab a couple different products in here just so we can populate. So you can actually come in here, you can add the filter buttons and then once you do that it will give you the option to see just the cust individual customers and so that way you can filter down to what that customer ordered. It will have their order dates for you so you can see when they ordered, how many they ordered and you can actually um, view everything in one spot. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat and so I'm not sure if others are aware of this, but um, 
you can actually see a sum of how much maybe a customer ordered. So if you filter down to an individual customer, you can actually come in here to this column M and I could highlight the whole column. And once you do that, you'll see these little kind of um, metrics down here at the bottom. You may have different ones more or less, um, but typically you will always see this kind of sum button or this sum number. So in this case, it's saying that I sold Amanda G $26 worth of product this year. If I put in, let's say I had given her one of these for free, um, when I come in here and do the sum, it'll show, okay, now I only gave her 13, or I only sold her $13. If you don't see the sum down here, you can always right click um, and then you'll see here where all of these are um, right here. And these are the things that are going to show up when you highlight. So let's say I don't want maximum, I don't want minimum, I don't want average. Um, and so that's where you would get them. So if for some reason your sum isn't showing up, let's say it just shows count, just come up, hover over here, right click, and then click sum. And then from then on it should show up so that you can see it. So quick recap um, of this part is filtering the filter button. So you go to da data filter um, and you need to be kind of highlighted on the top row in order to do that. It will allow you to filter down to different um, metrics that you want to see. So it's a good way for you to view individual custom customer orders throughout the year. Um, you can sort if for some reason your sort isn't working when you just click the button by the filter then you can highlight your whole table and click the sort button instead. And that will make sure that all of the data is included when it's sorting. And then you can also highlight any column that's kind of a uh, metric number and that will give you the sum of that column so that you can see how much you may have charged a customer throughout the year. Um, you could see what your net profit was on specific orders or on all of your orders throughout the year. Um, also, if I went back to my Color Street Orders tab and I said, I want to know how much I spent on inventory this year, I could just come in here and highlight that whole row and it would tell me that I spent $177 on inventory so far this year. Um, so this is just a quick way for you to view um, how much you may have spent on different products. I think that's where I'm going to leave it today. Hopefully this was a good refresher or a good kind of basics overview of some of the main functions in Excel that you may need to know about. Um, but again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you have suggestions for future weekly tips and tricks, I'm always happy to hear and see what is interesting to you guys and what might be helpful for you to learn about in the future. Please click the subscribe button and look for the next weekly tips and tricks next Monday. Thanks.